Hi everyone. Um, it's Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, and I hope everyone who celebrates American Thanksgiving anyway had a lovely relaxing day. I just received something from the mail and I am super excited about it, so I thought it'd be good to come on here and um, unbox it and maybe give it a shot. So this is from the London stationery shop, Choosing Keeping. I really love this shop. This is maybe my third, fourth time ordering from here. They really um, do a wonderful job wrapping up beautifully packaged products. And they have some really unique things that I don't see elsewhere, which is really nice. Uh, in an ideal world, I would have done that a lot nicer, but <laughs> that did not happen. So we'll make do here. Now, I had never heard of this. And when I saw it, I was intrigued, but I never really considered getting it. Let's see what's on the other side. But I just really wanted to try it. It's a nice sturdy box of some type of cardboard covered with some sort of paper fiber. I'm not sure exactly what. With, oh my goodness, I don't even know. Wow. Um, how, do I, how do I do this? Okay, so they come out, they're in two form palettes. Okay, got it. So they come out like this. Let me move this aside. So this is the sturdy carrying box. And it's two palettes, six each. I, I don't know what that says, but my goodness. I would like to keep that though. And each of these are individually wrapped in a similar format box. Each one has these beautifully wrapped. Oh my goodness. Um, pigments in their own little ceramic base. It'd be great for using again. I don't know how to pronounce what these are. These are something called Sayun de Kyoto Nihonga. This is the full pan tapachi set. I don't, you know, I'm gonna pull these all out so I can kind of um, swatch them. Not, I don't, let's see. Let me try to see on the site if it tells me um, what, I don't know if you can see that, what these really are. Um, they're a type of watercolor hand poured in these ceramic bowls and I you know I think they are like a Japanese gonzai paint um, I don't know it's really interesting so that's what I'm expecting I'm expecting these to be a lot like gonzai I don't maybe slightly different but not sure so this one Looks like that. Oh my goodness, this is so clear. Wow. Let me see if I can line them up in such a way. If I can figure out how to speed up this video, I know. But. They're all really nicely wrapped and. They're so interesting. I am. Um, these are not cheap. I think a huge factor in that is actually the presentation and probably more than anything these ceramic bowls. I mean they're they're beautiful and will obviously be reusable for paints. Um, so I, I'm sure you're paying for all of that because yeah I, I don't know how I'm gonna I may actually end up doing a, like a swatch card at the bottom or something so I can know what color these are because I have no idea what colors these are. Some of these seem more opa opaque, some of these seem more transparent. Um, they're just beautiful. Another one. 
And, you know, I wonder if these actually say different things. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know if anybody knows. I mean, just offhand, they look similar. Some of these are written on the bottom. Some of these aren't. Just move that to the side. It's these six here. And then these six. Kind of bright and vibrant, like beautiful, really vibrant color. Right there. Mm, maybe I can pull that here. Oh wow, this is like a ochre color. I would actually store this short term in these boxes if I were going to use it for any decent length of time I'd probably keep it out somewhere there. so these are 12 watercolors Oh, this looks like a blue. Blue is definitely my favorite, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Oh, this is a really vibrant blue. It's so pretty. I'm trying to come up with a better way to swatch my paints. I'm one of those people that definitely don't, I, I don't find swatching very fun, so I tend not to do that as a general rule, which of course I should, and it's wrong of me not to, but you know, um, I don't want to do that. But if I can find a fun way to swatch, then I would do it more. So if anybody has any good creative ideas of how to swatch, but really just paint, that would be great. I don't know if you can see all of these colors. These are the 12 colors and the ceramic pans. This one is really almost slightly chalkier. I wonder what this will come out as. It reminds me of matcha tea almost. So here I got some water. So I'm going to kind of maybe put a drop in each, a um, few drops in each to kind of activate it. I don't know that's what I would do for a traditional watercolor. I do this for my gonzais as well. So Ooh, you can already see like up here that yellow beading really nicely. Just pigments coming out on top. Really pretty. Okay, and I'm just gonna swatch a couple of these just to see what they look like. Um, here, I have here a a pad of 100% cotton kind of linen rag watercolor paper, which I really like. I'm gonna kind of move these over to the side a little bit. So I can put this here. You can see that. I'm going to try swatching these, and then I'll pull them in as necessary. Okay, this here is a brush that I got from another order as well, from Choosing Keeping. And I'll just use this. I actually find getting the bristles usable kind of hard, but we'll work on that. Okay, so I'll start with this one here. Oh, this looks really dark. Um, I have no idea what these colors are called, so. Oh gosh, it's beautiful though. It's really saturated. But, you know, honestly, it looks like there's a lot of good, um, it's, it's really, um, it looks transparent as well. So that's good. Oh, very transparent crimson color. It's so beautiful. Seeing as how a few drops got on there. Let's see what happens if I mix them together like that right there. It's very dark. Let's try this one. This one is... Oh! Oh! 
oh, it's a really earthy color. I like that earthy color. Almost reminds me of like a Van Dyke green. Oh, I love colors like this. Just a touch of ultramarine, I think it'd be really beautiful. This would be good for pine trees, I think. Oh, I like that. Yeah, these are really vibrant. Um, although they are a touch opaque, they aren't super opaque. I love how it bands out like that, like on these orangey veins. It's like fire. Oh, wow, I really like that. I'm kind of maybe move these up a little bit. And then I'll move, oops, sorry, I just hit the camera. Move these over so I can get them more cleanly in the shot. Do this one. Whoa, this is really light. What are you? Whoa, this is a super, super light pigment. I wonder what this is. It's like um, purpley. Oh, yeah, it just took a while. This, you know, if you are familiar with Daniel Smith's Moon Glow, I really love that. Was I really love for its granulation. This one is like that. With and it's also granulating, just a touch. It's gorgeous. This is this is a transparent color, very much so. Um, it reminds me of like a really pretty grape soda almost. Oh, these are pretty colors. Okay. This one, what are you? This one looks almost like a burnt sienna or like a red. This one reminds me a little bit of like a English English red. Oof, it's very dark. Yeah, like a red, yeah, an English red, is it, what are those called? Those earth red tones, or transparent red oxide or something. Really pretty earthy color. Wow, wow, it's really pretty. Okay, let me try this one. This one looks more burnt umbery. I wonder what this one is. Oh, not at all. This is like a mauvey, very transparent purple. How interesting. Um, wow, that's very interesting. Yeah, this one is cooler. This one, I guess, is warmer. I really like these colors. Okay, now let's try this one here. This one looks like a vermilion. Yeah, nice, beautifully vibrant vermilion color. Reminds me of a really nice tomato almost. Oh. Boy, now I have to figure out what I'm going to make with these because these are so pretty. This looks like a yellow ochre. Yep, that's a yellow ochre. That's a really transparent yellow ochre. It's really nice. That. These granulate pretty nicely too. I, I love granulation and texture in my in my paints. Okay, this one. Some type of green. Ooh, deep, dark. This is a really opaque green. It's really nice though. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I like that color too. Almost bordering on a black, that one. This is really nice and be good for uh, meeting down colors. That was that one, so let's do this one up here. This is a much nicer sort of, or much, much I should say nicer, um, brighter, brighter green. Oh, this is opaque, but it is absolutely beautiful. Oh goodness, this is a pretty color. Mixing these two together for the heck of it. And then my blues, which should be, should be my favorite. So, but actually these are all super, 
super pretty. I cannot come up with a favorite here. Okay. Ooh, this looks like a super granulating um, ultramarine. I love, I love granulating ultramarines. It's like that classic lapis lazuli color. Wow. Is quite a color. Yeah, look at that. It's like this corn flowery blue. Goodness. Yeah, too much water. But um, super, super nice. Wow. And then last but not least is what looks like this midnighty blue. like a um this reminds me of like if you're familiar with Daniel Smith in the throne blue that's what this reminds me of it's like a navy indigo it's um more blue than the indigos I'm familiar with but this is super nice so I would say I mean a lot of these colors have some great transparency they are super saturated a couple of these here are pretty darn opaque, but these look, these are just absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to play with these. So these are from Choosing Keeping the, oh boy, I don't remember what it was called, but this 12 little ceramic pan set. Um, it's definitely a little treat, splurge, um, but they're just stunningly beautiful. It, it feels really special <laughs> going down um, on paper. So, wow. That's my little choosing keeping haul. Hope everyone's having a lovely weekend. Bye.